Thanks everyone for coming to uh to this talk. Um, like Jess mentioned, gave this talk a few weeks ago at Elasticon. Um, I don't know if any of you attended that great event. Go to the next one if you can though. Um, so this talk is gonna cover um using parts of the Elastic Elk stack to detect anomalies in what we call transaction data. So we'll go over what transaction data means um in a bit. And we'll also talk about how analyzing this transaction data to detect anomalies can help prevent uh, specific financial threats and fraud. So a bit about myself, uh, my name is Tarek. I am a senior developer advocate at JP Morgan Payments. Um, and prior to being at JP Morgan Payments, um, I was at the developer relations team at MasterCard and uh, another company called Dwala, where I focused a lot on payment and open banking APIs. If any of you are familiar with that space, if not, totally cool. Um, just a, a bit more about like that background. Some of you probably had the thought, like, why does JP Morgan have a developer relations team? We don't have tech products, but uh, we do offer a set of APIs specifically focused around payments that allow people to accept, manage, and send money. Um, large businesses, governments are our customers. And we offer this set of APIs through what we call our JP Morgan payment developer portal. So it's a developer portal. If you guys are developers here, you're familiar with what developer portals do. You can log on, uh, view our APIs, check them out, uh, create an account, get API keys, start testing with them. And if you want, just contact us if you're interested in a payment API. Um, this portal is relatively new. That's probably why no one's ever heard of it, but uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in this kind of space. So these are just some everyday examples that our um, APIs can enable. So one of them would be through like a real-time payment system where let's say that um, you were a telecom company and you wanted to incentivize your uh, prospective customer to switch over to your service. Um, you can send them a text message using and another API, Twilio is probably the most popular one here for that. Um, you can then have them switch over to your service the minute they're on your network. You can have them get those funds within 30 minutes or less. So it's kind of almost a real-time situation of incentivizing a customer to switch over to your service. Another one, quick payment. Um, let's say you're an insurance company. And uh, you can allow your customers to start a um, claim through an app or a website or however your claim process works. And they can um, receive funds for that. Like you can get approved or denied or however that works. And they can receive their funds for that claim in 30 minutes or less. Uh, another real time example there. <laughs> So these are some more of the use cases or um, challenges that our customers end up facing. And when we say volume and scale of these payment systems, it's not just like marketing fluff or something we just say. Um, you've all heard of JP Morgan Chase. We're a global bank, one of the world's largest institutions. And again, we bank large businesses and governments. Um, a number that puts in perspective the scale that our systems process every day and why it's important to analyze this data is the amount of money that goes through our network every day. So does anyone know or want to guess how much money JP Morgan payments processes every single day through its network? If anyone wants to go off mute and just give me a number in dollars. Two million? Uh, a lot higher than that. A hundred million? So we process 10 trillion, that's what a T, 10 trillion dollars every single day. Keeping in mind, this include this is all of our payment networks. We're banking governments, we're banking the largest institutions in the world. If you shopped on Amazon, if you've um, used Venmo, a lot of systems, um, go through our, our network. If you sell somebody money, 
all of that combined, everything adds up to $10 trillion a day through a bunch of different payment methods. Uh, we spoke a lot about transaction data. So what exactly is it that transaction data consists of? Um, transaction data can consist of basically anything during, before, after the life cycle of a transaction. So this is just a JSON object of what a transaction could look like using one of our APIs, specifically our APIs for online payments or e-commerce. Um, it'll include names, date, time, locations, IP addresses, et cetera. Um, but it really can include anything that increases the robustness of the payment, such as item potency keys from the client side, the transaction status. Um, if you did any verification on the customer, you can enhance the data through that or really just anything that can be tied back to the payment. And Whenever we say financial threats, these are just a few examples. I'm sure you guys have noticed that fraud is getting very sophisticated and like even I'm very savvy to it and I'm almost falling for these text messages sometimes, which is crazy. Um, so there's really two main categories of threats here that's going to include fraud and money laundering, right? And looking for anomalies and transaction data can help you detect these threats. Um, the one that a lot of us know, some of us might have unfortunately been victims of, is credit card fraud. It's when somebody uses our credit card information to make a purchase or withdraw money um, maliciously with that wasn't us. The one we're going to test out here today is called card testing, uh, something most people might not have heard of. But imagine you're a malicious actor and you illegally obtain credit card account information from um, many different card holders and you want to see if this these credit card numbers are still valid, if the if the um the car the legal card holder noticed that their card is lost or if there's any purchases going on, if they cancel the card, basically if it can still be used for purchasing. Um, this is the one we're going to test out, but another one that can be spotted is money laundering. We all, I mean, if you've watched Breaking Bad, you know how this works, but it is the process of concealing illegally obtained money through usually bank transfers or transactions, same way they had the car wash in Breaking Bad. Um, smurfing, which is breaking down large transactions into smaller or less suspicious amounts. So. In the US, banks have to report transactions larger than $10,000. Um, but if you start noticing a bunch of transactions coming through your bank or your network for $9,999, like that becomes suspicious over time. And it's good to look into the data and analyze it. Like, why is this person or this account constantly making transactions of just under? the um the legal limit for something being reported and trade-based laundering um it's just misrepresenting the price of a good or service so let's say um i was selling something for fifty dollars but when i go and report that income to the irs i'm saying i'm selling it for a hundred bucks i just laundered fifty dollars because 50 of those dollars are untaxed and unaccounted for um, cool. So now that we talked about all of that, does anyone have any questions there so far? Good to go. Cool. We're going to do a quick demo on card testing and seeing how this works. So let me just pull up my code editor and I have to start sharing again. One sec. Okay, so this is VS Code. Again, my developers, you know what this is. You're familiar with this. I think we've all used this. Um, I wrote a script here that's just basic JavaScript that's going to generate um, records that I can place into Elastic System. And this, these records are going to take the, um, the shape of transaction data. So if I just run the script, 
and hopefully live coding is on my side today. Cool, that worked. We have this file called synthetic documents. It is just a bunch of transactions. You can see the amounts here. The currency, it's all gonna be US dollars and most importantly, the IP address. So you're seeing where the transactions are coming from or what network the transactions are coming from. So I'm just gonna open this and I am going to go over to Elastic's dashboard. Um, so here I'm just gonna add in the data that we just generated. I'm just gonna drag the file over. And as you see, there's a thousand records in here, um, meaning a thousand transactions were generated. Sorry. And basically these are some of the, um, the fields. Oops. Sorry. So I'm just going to import the data. Um, and Elastic's dashboard is just going to go through this process right here. And even just looking at this chart before we analyze any of the data, we can start seeing something weird is going on. Like there's there's an outlier basically, which is right here. So we're just gonna end up looking more into that. So one way you can do this is by creating what's called an anomaly detection job in Elastic. So if you go over in Kibana over to the machine learning section, um, you can do what's called creating an anomaly detection job. And basically the way you do this, you create job, select the data you're trying to analyze. You can see I did this a bunch of times. Um, the one I just created was transactions examples. And what we're gonna do is something called the population study. So why a population study versus the rest of this? A population study basically analyzes the data to figure out what is normal behavior which is very useful when you're trying to figure out what is going, like what is something that would be abnormal. So that's why this one would be useful. It's studying a population of um, transaction data. We wanna use all of the data. Again, that that's anomaly is popping up there. Um, just go through next, population field. I'm gonna use the IP address here as something to, to study because that's going to indicate location. And again, card testing is when multiple cards or different payment methods are being used from the same IP address. We're trying to see how many events there are. Next, transaction example. You can just, you can give this any name. This is just the name. Just click next. Next, again, still popping up. And let's just create this job. Um, Just something to note as this runs, I already did it. You have to create a machine learning node. I did this beforehand just because it can take about five-ish minutes to spin up, but you do have to create a machine learning node within Elastix to, um, to get this to work. Um, And let's just view the result of this job that's run. As you can see, there's something going on here that's been given a severity score of 94. And there were a lot of transactions coming from this specific IP address. So imagine you had an e-commerce store where you were testing these transactions out on and you notice this, you can then either block the IP address, like however you would want to address an issue like this. You can block the IP address have somebody look into if these transactions look fraudulent, um, but it is something that gets flagged and not just gonna pass through your system for no reason. Um, but yeah, that is anomaly detection using Elastic. Pretty cool feature.